Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you something real cool regarding Free Realize Automation 7 because I'm going to show you how you can use Orchestrator to manipulate values of running machines within Free Realize operations. So here's the deal, there is a new, a new broker, a new event broker available within Realize Automation 7. And if you go to Administration and Events, then you can subscribe to events. So by subscribing to an event, then you can, you can put some rules in place that allow you to catch an event of the life cycle of a virtual machine. So in this example, I've created uh, an event based on the machine life cycle. And I'm catching the moment where the machine life cycle is going to equal somebody is rebooting the machine. So you can see that there are a lot of different events that you can catch. But I'm going to catch the on reboot event, but also reset, shut down deploying, uh, connecting a CD, installing VMware tools. This is a complete list with all the lifecycle events that are available. Besides that, there are other types of events available. So if you create a new subscription, you can do post or pre-approvals, you can do event log events, also people changing blueprints, resource reclamation events, but I think the most important ones are the lifecycle and provisioning events. So let's get back to my prepared event right here. Um, so I'm going to edit this event or show you what I've did. The condition is I'm trapping the event that equals a reboot machine and then I'm kicking off a workflow in Orchestrator. And the workflow I'm kicking off in Orchestrator is the event broker VNIC workflow. And what I see is that this workflow has an input parameter type properties called payload. And all the custom properties of this virtual machine are going to be going to be put into there. And I also have a returning output parameter called virtual machine and update properties called properties. And this one is used to read back if there were any changes made in those properties. So this is done. It's a blocking event. So when the reboot is done, I'm blocking the reboot until uh, the network card is changed and then uh, it is released again. So let's finish this one. You have to do one additional thing. If you go to your design uh, blueprints, so you have to specify that you want to pass a set of uh, custom parameters to your virtual machine or to your uh, orchestrator host. So if I'm going to this virtual machine, I'm going to the properties and I show you the custom properties, then you see that the extensibility lifecycle properties for the building the machine are exposed. Um, but you can change it if you wish, if you want to narrow down or make it broader then uh, yeah, you can just say, well, I want to have everything from the 32 and on. Okay, so this is cool. Um, this is created. I also provided the test custom property, for instance, for your CMDB entry or something. So let's finish this. And uh, this is saved. Okay. Uh, so on the other hand, on the other end, I have orchestrator. Whoop. I have orchestrator. In, or in orchestrator, I have this event broker VNIC thing. And I'm going to show you the code that is used inside this workflow. So uh, there's an input parameter. It's the payload input parameter. And um, so that's the only parameter I'm offering to this to this workflow. If I looked at the scripting part, then the input parameter, uh, I'm traversing through the input parameter and I'm getting all the values and putting them in the system log. Okay, that's cool. The second one here is also interesting because the input parameter is still the payload, but the output parameter is the virtual machine and or update properties uh, property properties. And if I look at the scripting part here, is that I'm creating a new instance of this property properties and I'm putting in a new network 
label right here. So this is the label of the distributed port group I want to connect my virtual machine to. So let's jump into the web client. And in the web client I can... You have to move over a little bit. In the web client I'm able to grab a copy of the 6000 to 5006. Uh, control copy and let's go to the back to the script the JavaScript and see if I'm able to paste it in here control paste yeah there it is so the 5006 is in here now okay save and close increase version everything is okay so let's put this whole thing to the test uh, let's go to my free realize automation engineering tenants and let's go to the catalog oh no we go to items because it was based on a reboot of a machine and what you see here is my QA win 011 it's connected to the 5002 transport network uh, Let's reboot this machine and see what happens. So I'm rebooting the machine. Submit. I'm going to the requests. And the requests will show me that the reboot of this machine was approved. I did some tests. Yes, <laughs> it's clearly visible. And when I go to the orchestrator host, I should see at 710, I should see a new instance. There it is of my event so the event kicked off this script this script is running when you look at the information that is posted here it's uh, part of the payload so you can see the component id you can see the owner you can see things like ip addresses or you can see the event that was issued on reboot and uh, you can gather a lot of information from uh, the payload um, so now this uh, this orchestrator workflow has finished. It has provided the changed values to vRealize automation. So if we jump back to this one right here, we go to the items. Then I'm in my Windows 11 machine and the machine is rebooting currently. Uh, it's now on 5006, so it jumped from 5002 to 5006 simply because I catched an event by rebooting the machine. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so it's a lot of fun connecting Orchestrator to vRealize Automation. Well, Eric Sloof is signing off. Uh, please visit my website, ntpro.nl, as often as you can. And have fun.